would now like to invite our first panel for the day to deliberate on a very pertinent topic for the news industry, that is reducing the noise in TV news. The speakers for this session will discuss how the noise factors that we see on TV is often seen as an outcome of its current business model. Is there any solution to it and how can it be corrected? Now I welcome on screen, Ms. Priya Sehgal, Senior Executive Editor, News X, Mr. Varun Kohli, CEO, ITV, Ms. Preeti Chaudhary, Editor, India Today, and Ms. Arunima, Deputy Editor, CNN News 18, as the moderator for the session. Over to you, Ms. Arunima. Morning, Mr. Kohli. Hi, Preeti. Morning, morning, Arunima. Hi, Rohel there. Uh, hello, I think Priya, I can't see you there. Hi, Priya. Hi, yeah, I can see you there. hi. hi. So a um, very interesting topic that, that uh, has been brought before us, reducing noise in TV news. So uh, maybe to start with, uh, do we all agree that TV news is now uh, overpowered by noise? Do we agree on the definition of, of noise and do we agree that it is overpowered? Starting with you, Priya, and then Preeti, and then Mr. Kohli. I think there the, you will find this uh, panel is in consensus. There is too much noise uh, rather than, you know, news, which is, of course, the tagline of NewsX also. Uh, we need to get news back into the business. And I think the best example is what we saw recently because we can do it. You know, we went into lockdown last year. I think t television behaved the most responsibly. You know, it was that we were at a responsible best. We were the only source of news, how to handle the pandemic, whether it was, you know, we were talking to people, the stakeholders themselves, you know, those whose lives were affected doctors telling people what to do it was the best source of information no drama just information and we came out of lockdown at our worst that is when the Sushant Singh Rajput case happened I mean television has never been at its lowest than it was at that point so you know we so we when we want to we can behave responsibly and we've shown that we could but somehow we don't and why don't we do that? I think a lot of it has to do with this TRP business, which is why I'm so happy with this TRP scam that has come out, exposing how these ratings are manipulated, exposing also that the way to um, measure these TRPs is also not adequate enough. You know, we are just, um, uh, I think you all have the numbers, Varun, but the, we are so few meters compared to the number of TV sets that are there. It's just not adequate enough. And But that is how advertisements are generated. That is how uh, TVs get the uh, channels get their revenue. So in the end of it, the whole system is flawed because we've told that, you know, those channels that make the most noise get the most TRPs and get the most ads. And hence, that is the model for all of us to follow. Not that lie has been nailed after the TRP scam. And I really hope that that is an eye opener that people actually, because whoever I met and I move in, you know, all of us move in various different circles. Nobody watches these channels that shout and scream and everybody's holding their head about you know why do you guys promote such people then where are they getting their viewers from where are they getting the ad revenues from where are they getting the trps from it's been manipulated clearly so now i hope it's time to bring conversation and real issues back on the news agenda and get news back on the forum that's right. really my opening statement Preeti, i mean take that point forward is it true that nobody really watches channels that shout because you might say a particular channel or particular anchor was pioneer of this shouting matches but isn't it true that all of us are now onto that bandwagon? There is no differentiating A from B? You know, I, I tend to agree with what Priya said that I would reckon the viewer, um, you know, at the core of it would not want a panic attack, but would want an in, want information. They want information. They don't want uh, sensationalism. They don't want a panic attack. But having said that, um, I don't think we are, we are solely responsible for it. I would, you know, I'll, I'll come to the fact that yes, you want news without noise. That is what at least India Today endeavors to do. We've done so through the you know course of this lockdown. Um, I would reckon even when the Sushant Singh Rajput case was blowing up, most channels were blowing up and there was a lot uh, of restraint shown by our channel, but that's separate. You know, but the question you asked me is very interesting, Arunuma, because what I do believe is it's not just the channels. There is an audience ready to lap up uh, the sensationalism, the noise, uh, the no news noise. And, uh, and, and, and they're very willing to lap it up, whether it's TRPs or not TRPs. There are no TRPs right now. Mm -hmm. Have we changed at all? Absolutely not. You know, Priya uh, spoke about the Sushant Singh Rajput case. I think it was, um, I would reckon in the annals of television history, we hit our rock bottom as a collective. And, uh, you know, if you look at even, even with COVID, uh, when we've gone through COVID, yes, there was a period where, yes, we were all very responsible, dispensing information, but leave that one odd show out. Ultimately, we're really not living up to what we should do. And I don't think we're solely responsible. I would reckon that there is a ready audience as much as we are to blame. 
the people who watch us are to blame as well. So the change has to be collective. It has to come from the society as well as uh, you know, those who are watching us as well as us. So, so Mr. Kohli, uh, there is no TRP ever since the TRP scam broke out. Uh, we've not been getting ratings, but have we really changed? And if we have not changed, then is revenue the reason for this noise? So I'll uh, get to the management perspective because you are all illustrious uh, editorial guys. Priya is my colleague. Uh, I can't debate with you on that. But I'll just go briefly on, on what we think as management. And I'm talking to a lot of management across the news platforms since the bark scam happened and all that. Uh, Arunima, two things are very clear. Uh, people are discarding uh, Mr. Bachchan of 70s. The angry young people who come on screen, shout and go. And I have seen a lot of channels. Uh, we uh, in NewsX was always of news, not noise. So we have been following. But I've seen a lot of channels plugging off mics of guys who have been shouting. right? And it's a welcome relief because the pandemic has really caused a lot of stress to all of us. So we don't want to go to television and watch it. The second paradigm shift is screens are changing. So screens, of course, broadcast remains on television. But there is an OTT. There is a digital which gives you a lot of feedback. And the new age viewers don't want noise at all. They want different things. They want newer things to be served to them. And that is why if you see, uh, especially on the web, you get videos doing very well, which don't have any noise. Mm. That's mm. Now with TRPs going off for some time, the editorial pressures have lessened to a large extent. And the focus is back on content. Because it's the content which is which is the king. We have lot, uh, lost much of revenue after the bark. Shows that people have believed in the content we watch because we are in a genre where our advertiser is also our viewer. So majority of the... And everybody has a choice. Mm. So you go to an advertiser. Mm. If my sales team talks to an advertiser, they ex exactly tell which channel to go and which not. And trust me, the guys who were uh, trying to rule the roost don't even figure into discussions. The guys who have been the angry young man or whatever you call it because uh, uh, we have been seeing how things are. The problem uh, was ratings. The problem was advertisers. The problem was pressures. But I think over the last one year since the time pandemic happened, a lot of things have changed because a lot of management, editorial and otherwise have sat together and come that we want to create a world-class product. Because next 10 years, the screens will be multiples. Mm. So if you have to go to multiple platforms, you have to engage in a content which is good for all. Because ultimately, we are serving news. You know, uh, interesting that you say that editorial pressures have gone down. Uh, Preeti, let's get back to that conversation of, of storytelling. The reason why, uh, you know, television scored over other, other mediums uh, when, when we started off with 24 hours news channel, because we would go where the story is, report real time as the story broke, but uh, not just in India. And I'm just going to uh, quote from a 2013 US uh, media report uh, by Pew Research Center, which said that across the three cable channels in US, which is CNN, Fox, and uh, MSNBC, coverage of live event, which required ground report, which required a crew and OB van to go there on the spot, fell 30% from 2007 to 2012, while interview segments, uh, which tended to take fewer resources, went up by 31%. India also, the story is the same, isn't it? I mean, often we are told, and Mr. Kohli and Priya, you can come in uh, on that, but Priti, often we are told that it's easy to fill uh, you know, a, a, a space for yes. a show, for a half-hour show, with a BJP, a Congress, a left, and, and, uh, and you know, another spokesperson, rather than to send a reporter with an OB van to an area. So that revenue model is also dictating where we are heading. You know, Arunma, you couldn't have said it better. And this was a point I, I wanted to make in the beginning as well. If you, uh, we collectively got lazier uh, in terms of uh, news collection, news reportage, putting out information. We've forgotten what we used to do best. There was a reason, you know, and instead of, you know, you know, we can we can go on and on till kingdom come about this. But, you know, you're a reporter, Arunima. You go out in the field. Haven't you seen over the past uh, many years the respect for a reporter has gone down notch by notch and it only comes to what we're putting out. We've gotten lazier. We'd rather let people scream instead of be a story talking. And what was the tenet of journalism that we were all taught? And, you know, we went to the same college. What was the tenet of journalism that we were taught uh, in college, which was your story needs to speak, not you. 
if your story speaks loud enough you don't need the noise we don't have those stories anymore yes, who invest the journalists have become the story not the story exactly. that they cover yeah exactly you know who who invests that time anymore you know i still remember you know we still try to do it and, and i'll give you two examples but who invests that time anymore when you send out a journalist you know doggedly for two weeks to cover a story and forget about that reporter and let him come up with a hard hitting investigative report and you go with that and you go with that big you know that doesn't very rarely do you see that what you see mostly is from morning to night you just see talking heads because you need to fill up that 20 minute segment the monies are coming in in any case let people scream why give them news right. you know and i'll give you just one quick example before you know if you go across to the others hmm. you know during this you know one year with what we've seen you know a couple of stories i would reckon every channel would know that they'd have but uh, you know a story that we are very proud of which created a lot of noise but we didn't create that in the newsroom was this one video that one of our colleagues shot in hathras yes. and that video went on to be the talking point for days on and days end you know it shook a government uh, let's not get you know what it got down to but that is storytelling you come up with something strong you come up with good content you come up with journalism you know you don't need the noise you know priya since you do also these one on one interviews where where you were having a calm discussion with with your news maker but that that seems to be part of a different tribe that kind of uh, you know news journalism seems to be of a different tribe do you get under pressure as well as far as revenue as far as rating goes does it work if if you do that kind of uh, uh, you know a new news television journalism Fortunately, I've been very lucky in terms of support, also, and in terms of viewership, also. You know, the people actually welcome the conversation, and you know, taking off from something what Preeti said, when the story becomes the news and not you. Today, the anchors, as you know, we've been discussing, have become brands, mm -hmm. and their views have become the news. So that the faceless anchor is really now a thing of the past. You know, everybody has to have an identity. So now it's not just the story is broken, but I also say who broke it, which channel, and then I know, okay, is me yes lanta or was lanta, you know. that is the problem and we often have this debate on you know internally and as well as outside that should we show news or should we show views unfortunately what is happening in the channels is during the day the what breaks is news but in the evening when we have the discussion what happens is views now these views are good because you need to assimilate what has happened and analyze it but it's also how that uh, panel is composed which you know you can easily slant a panel to give your point of view you know a of course you have an anchor that uh, for suppose gives his or her point of view which i think uh, is something which i always try and avoid because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. people are not tuning in to hear me but that's you know um, uh, they want to hear the uh, guests that i've got but it also depends on the quality of the guest so one rule that i do is i do not get spokespersons because they've been taught that every debate is an akhada who shouts more they've been given shouting points <laughs> and it's a verbal akhada you know which is why we have shows with no offense i don't know which channel they're on but shows like dangal shows like akhada muk muk uh, what is that um, Uh, you know, uh, there are all various shows that come, which also indicate that this is going to be an aggressive face-off. So let's mm -hmm. not, you know, we don't get into those kind of uh, uh, arguments. Don't get spokespersons because they will shout. They've been taught to shout. But get the stakeholders. Try and get a leader. If you don't have a leader, then get a journalist, a political analyst. and you know that's you try and balance the debate out unfortunately today we have a lot of people who are masquerading as uh, political analysts but they are actually people affiliated to a party and a they have a viewpoint and they are they're not a channel that. gets lopsided yeah so that's what we want to watch out for mr kohli all of us are on the same page that we want to reduce noise we want to bring in more content but again to get to the revenue part of it i mean this is this a problem limited to indian television again what is happening in india have often been called foxification of of indian news fox uh, you know in the last two months its ratings were going down but march onwards it has picked up again and what fox is saying is that we are going to be that opposition to joe biden so so anchors with a view anchors who who challenge uh the the establishment or who speak the same language as the establishment isn't the audience lapping it up do they want neutral voices anymore or do they want anchors to take sides what what is advertisers say what are the ratings say see uh we have to look at it a little differently one uh, within the industry we are not united hmm. we don't come together for a common cause right that is the point number one you know and as priya rightly pointed out the anchors have started giving their view points they decide on everything not the viewer so of course the viewer will not like because if you are testing his intelligence a lot of channels will go off like i again said the revenue streams are opening now the revenue streams are not just limited to advertising on broadcast you know 
digital revenues are very big ott revenues are growing so there will be multiple platforms from where you will get revenues everything cannot be labeled as revenue i can tell you there are channels uh, who do very well in advertising in spite of not getting great ratings right and there are channels who got great ratings today are out of business there are a lot of advertisers who are moving out because they don't want to be with the kind of environment that channels are populated mm -hmm. and and you all know i'm mean, that uh, that particular channels are not on on the platform with us right now but i have seen of late advertisers wanting to shift because even the advertising side nobody has gone and sold environment everybody has gone and sold only ratings if you take a little tougher stance and the sales team goes and says see my environment is different i am refreshing i attract an audience who sits with me and this problem will get over the problem is both ways the editorial anchors think that if they don't become the brands they might be out of job the management thinks if you don't get ratings you will not get money this has to change together and together will only happen when the industry comes together and fights this menace called bark ratings because the ratings with few meters with people shouting if that people shouting becomes the number one number two by default for whatever scam it is at the end of the day what happens all other all other editorial people are under pressure to perform the management is also under pressure to perform because none of us have distribution revenues bearing few channels and that is also very insignificant right mm -hmm. so you have to run a business ethically you have to get advertising support now the currencies and thinking are changing i'll give you a small example last four months five months we are out of bar how many channels have lost business mm. i've not seen many news channels losing a lot of business barring the guys who were claiming to be number 1 number 3 number 4 number 5 i mean the top ones are still getting the revenues i mean all of you uh, with editorial works very closely with sales you would have known nobody has come and complained to you now otherwise if ratings was only the case we would have all been out business we would have been and then we would have got business so this rating business has to somewhere out of the and content has right. to become the main thing because news so, is all about giving information to viewers right so rating is is one of the issues that that we have all agreed upon that if if news has become noise rating in the way those ratings are are brought before us the process of collection the process of putting them out that def, that's definitely a problem but really is problem also with news gathering Uh, take the example of the current assembly elections how many teams each of us each channel has has sent to bengal comparatively how many to assam and how many to puducherry further you go away from new delhi further is the investment in in uh, news gathering and and when you answer that whether there is a problem do you think this mojo kit the mobile journalism that could be an answer because earlier you had to send a camera person a reporter and ob crew now a one person crew with a mobile can go and cover that can that uh, address the distance of tyranny as as uh, a former boss of mine called it yes i think we share the boss <laughs> but uh, yes you know when you talk about the distance of tyranny arunima um you know i think uh, we've all seen it haven't we and and i really don't think a mojo kit will solve that problem i personally don't think a mojo kit will solve that problem yes you know when you're sitting in on the draft board before an election like every channel has an election board room and you you know gave the analogy of elections there and you put it all out you know you know you know okay this is a tectonic election you have uh, west bengal 80% of your resources are automatically given to west bengal mm -hmm. and you'll have say 5% or two reporters going into assam puddu cherry to stringer kar lega mm -hmm. you know agar aa gaya to kuch bada ho jayega to bhej denge mm -hmm. you know usually this is you know uh, how it's broken down but uh, you know what's why i think it might change when you talk about the mojo is not so much with us because there are too many people with mojos right now who are not with channels there are independent journalists who are going out there reporting some of them doing exceptional job and some of them doing not such a great job because i think um storytelling is where you talk about journalism there's a sense of responsibility it's not that our tribe or our ilk has really you know kept up to that responsibility but there are so many people out there and the competition is not just you me or priya the mm. competition out there is so many of these journalists right now who are out there reporting with that mojo so that makes it essential to cover that story so when you know you know there are going to be five people doing um, you know for example i'll give you an example what happened yesterday you talk about a sam when that entire evm uh, story broke we were we were lucky we had a journalist there yeah you know we were and that was the story which you know in the evening when you know we talk about all talking heads debating we were debating that but we were very lucky that we had 
a reporter who was dogged who got the story first, but there were many channels who did not, and they were relying on stringer information. But coming back to you know, that quick point that I was trying to make, that there are so many people out there bearing mojos and reporting, some of them doing an exceptional job, some of them doing not, it adds the pressure. So I hope, you know, our universe is going to be widened where the tyranny of distance is going to be reduced because of them, not because of us. I don't think it's a call that you and I or our editorial teams will take. Unfortunately, we've got to say it here. You know, it, it it's not going to happen. You know, a mojo kit, you still put that mojo kit in Bihar, in, in Bengal. Yeah. You know, and not say in 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 Assam. But when you see five other mojo kids reporting out of Assam, you'll be forced to put one, because then so, your digital you know uh, content will be eaten up by those guys. So so Priya, uh, we've discussed rating is a problem for this now. Is uh, we're also debating. Come in on that. Uh, whether where we send our news crew, the kind of stories we want to say is also a reason for this noise. Is there a solution for it? Well, I think one uh, solution or re rather a reality checker is the social media. You know, we've also seen the stories that are not covered or that we choose not to cover are highlighted on the social media. And that's really where we come in, uh, you know, uh, and we have to step up because we've seen the, the uh, quite often television channels follow the uh, social media or story that's broken there and then we pick it up. So this whole thing of sending journalists, sending uh, Mojo kids, even if uh, a lot of channels didn't have that story, somebody or the other on social media would have put it up, you know, and we, we would and take it from there and source it. So sourcing stories are becoming easier in terms for channels and I'm sure Varun will be very happy. There's not so much of money that will need to be spent really to send people out because you have anybody with a camera or with a cell phone is a reporter, you know, mm. you will get your story. It's just whether you give it, whether you choose to play it or not, that becomes really the question, you know, whether it is newsworthy, TRP worthy, whether it fits in with the agenda of your channel, a lot of uh, equations come into play over here. And that's really, I think, your biggest uh, issue today in covering news. News will come to you. Now we are in that position. Everybody, somebody in some corner will get you that news. Do you play it or not? That's the big question. How do you play it? Do you, you know, give it with the uh, agenda view? Yes, you. I think you were speaking about anti-establishment. Anti-establishment was the norm, and that is why some channels came up. You know, let's mm, mention yes. it. In Arnab mm. Goswami came up because he was anti-establishment mm. during the Congress. And I think his biggest fall is that you know he's not keeping up to that uh, image right now. You know, he's not here, so I don't want to really take his name, but anybody, so anti-establishment was the norm for the UPA. Somehow in this government, it's become, I think there's a race to see who is more pro-establishment than the other. There is a change of stance that I'm seeing in the current scenario. Now, people on the road, because also there is, we have a popular prime minister, people I don't think want to hear too much ill of Prime Minister Modi. Also, you know, it's not just the channels. As Preeti said, the viewers are also responsible. Nobody wants to hear too much of Modi bashing. I've seen that also. Maybe when the tide turns, yes, but right now he still has the popular uh, thing. So, I mean, for instance, what happened in Bihar in the migrants thing, you know, we were blaming him until we saw the voters themselves not blaming him. They were mm. blaming the state government. So, you know, it's not just the channels that are pro-establishment. The mood on the ground is also such. And, and the, you know, that brings me back to the point that I was saying. Maybe because of that sentiment, People are now expecting anchors to toe a line. I mean, we blame anchors for creating noise. But is, is it not true that people are expecting anchors to, to say what, what a, especially youngsters, it is often said that youngsters have a certain view and they enjoy only anchors who are screaming, shouting. We've seen anchors walking up to spokespersons, threatening them, intimidating them. There have been spokespersons at each other's neck in, in studios. And they, they enjoy ratings on social media. Yeah, that's how they become and that is why you have those students from Pakistan sitting there and hurling abuse at them. You know, you want to find someone a punching bag. So, you know, you, maybe it fills in that bloodlust thirst, you know, the audience, uh, the viewers have that, you know, it's, like I said, it's a verbal card out there. So perhaps you're right. It does fit into a certain niche of viewership. But it's, that's really not my kind of TV. <laughs> it is not. But again, coming back to that question of trying to address, I mean, if, if revenue is dictating our choice, Mr. Kohli, this is the fact that, you know, uh, social media, uh, the fact that, you know, most of the people are now watching news on their phone, appointment viewing, tuning in for the nine o'clock news is now increasingly going down. People are watching it on Twitter, on YouTube. Is that changing the way you are perceiving news, the way you are interacting with the editorial team? on what should go on air and how that social media consumer of news, uh, that segment should be addressed. So uh, coming to uh, my organization, Priya will vouch for it. We have never put pressures on editorial to put what sort of story. Never in my seven years in ITV network, uh, heading close to 11 channels, have we called up any editorial guy and said to put a story or not to story. I, mean, I can say it with a lot of authority. 
and i can say a lot of managements don't put pressures i'm say uh, i i saw sure india today i worked work for mail today so i know there's never been a pressure on editorial and so will not be cnn because all the organizations which are represented there have worked there so mm. i know there is there's no pressure uh, this is a hola lu which has been built by people on uh, revenues dictating i have not seen that happen of course rating dictating always has happened because that's has been the currency initially which has brought advertising mm. but let's look at english news the ratings or the pie with the bark says on an english news is minuscule now right still people are getting business people get business because they want to be seen with certain side of tv my only problem which i see is uh, like in the west the channels clearly dictate what side of political uh, spectrum are they are they yes. towards the right or the left mm. in india the problem is even the channel leaning completely right will also say i am unbiased Yes. i'm just time has come where the viewers go to a particular channel because they want to hear a particular view if they like the government they want to be with only those channels and vice versa i think time has come where the channel leanings have to also be clear i think there is no such leaning which is there because everybody says that they are the most fair guys but the fact is from the content you can know which channel is moving with sight No. Interesting so point if, there, isn't it, Prithi? I mean, editorially speaking, do you see that happening? I think because as industry insiders, most of us know which anchor's show is is tilting which which way. Or Arunma, which I'll just take a se- I'll just yeah, take yeah. a second to explain you. Yeah. In in an X channel, and I don't want to name. I exactly know an eight o'clock news will tilt to right of center, and a nine o'clock news will tilt to left of center. I'm saying <laughs> a viewer is smart. I'm saying you have to make your choice. That as a like you go to West. Fox will go one side, yes. and they will not win. And CNN will go the other side. They will not go away. And the audiences are attached to them. Now, tomorrow, if you start having such audiences, you can become pay channels at a big price because the guys will want to come and hear you, mm. and you can have rich content. Right. So I, I was asking you, Preeti. You know, uh, like he mentioned, Fox, CNN. We we know how the West operates. They're very clear. Even for newspapers, uh, people people who know which way a particular newspaper is leaning will take two subscription of two different newspaper, read the right leaning one and the left leaning one, and make up their mind. In television, I mean, all of us claim to be objective. No channel says that we are biased or leaning. Is there t- is there any scope? Do you see this happening where channels or particular shows declare their allegiance and say, you know, this is the this is the uh, editorial side we are taking. You decide whether you want to see us or not. <coughs> No, Arunima, it's a pity, isn't it? You know, it 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 is such a pity because I'll take off from what even Priya said. Um, you're already being slotted. We've all gotten slotted. You know, you, all of us go out as anchors. We're on air. We go out when we report, and it's such a pity because you're already either Godi media, depends which camp you walk into, right? If you're walking into a right wing camp, which is you know, uh, you know, people who are out there. If you're covering an event, then you're lauded. But if the same person, um, and, and you know, and and it cuts both ways. The same mm. person walks into, let's say, um, a, a Kisan Andolan camp. They are immediately branded Godi Media. You know, labeling, branding. We were we were not supposed to be this. You know, I can. You know, this is yes. At at the level, um, it's sad that one has to say it and verbalize it in so many ways. But was it actually there? Because I remember, uh, you know, if you remember when the Commonwealth uh, scam hit. Mm. every channel worth its salt went behind uh, the congress yes. uh, went behind kalmari i remember running behind kalmari days and on days and you know and if possibly most journalists at that point of time who were covering the case would say they were responsible of bringing down the sheila dikshit government because yes. you know at at one point of time you and you were not i, I wasn't called bhajpai or you know there were there are so many other uh, you know unpleasant uh, mm. idioms that i could subscribe to here you know you won't call that at that point of time you were just doing your job but the sad part is today that each one of us already have found the label so like you know varun also said that one channel for one show will be left one channel for one show will be right and immediately you form the bracket i think that's a very new thing we shouldn't it shouldn't have been there but that's sad that it is and why should we be declaring it we are news no why should i be declaring that okay my uh, you know my show is going to be leaning towards the right so you know that's what it is going to be and that's my audience you know the day i start doing that i should take myself out of news i'm sorry i actually do subscribe to the old tenets of news which is non partisan you know and uh, neutr- not maybe neutral but objective so and the, fact the day there, i start yeah so the, the day i start there. declaring yeah the day i start declaring my allegiance on news then i need to be on entertainment 
Hmm. I don't need to be on news. You know, then I need to get myself out of there because that's not the space for me. Yeah. Anyway, but, yeah. But Priya, the labeling has already happened. Preeti was talking about the Kisan Andolan at Singhu border. Actually, when we went there at Gazipur at Singhu, there were posters put up with yeah. uh, you know reporters and anchors' yeah. faces saying, "If you see these people, don't speak to them." There were there were people uh, who were there to report, and they were forced to come to a press conference and address about how uh, the, you know they, their management were telling them to tow a particular line. I mean, things couldn't have been worse for 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 the television industry than than what is going on. How do you really come out of this situation? A lot of reporters, a lot of camera persons are just earning their bread and butter. They don't really care about about the labeling. How do you come out of this this noise space? I mean, what is the way forward? I think uh, you're right. The reporters on ground are unbiased. They are just going and just doing their job, which is reporting. It's those who are sitting in the studios, and that's when the, again we come back to why anchors are being labeled, why anchors are going out of their way to prescribe to a certain party point of view, and they do it very consciously. It's not that something they've been told to do. It's just something they do it to build their own image and build their own branding. Very often, I've seen that a lot of anchors want to, you know, build their thing because maybe they've seen it from Fox News, they've seen it from you know they have other idols uh, from the West. but they have taken the stars that we have to stand for something some party some you know uh, ideology which is very weird because you should if i am an anchor i should stand for priya is good for politics priti is good for you know say uh, politics again or business you know or your you know the kind of shows you do we should be known for the kind of work we do and not for the kind of uh, views and beliefs that we are going to be espousing that is my main problem really with the branding yes go in for branding branding helps by not but at least go in for the right kind of branding or go in for the right field in not just be a politics branding everything has become politicized today i was looking you know we having press club elections those are also in camps it's polarized you know that is the world that we live in that everything we do has even our vaccines have become polarized yes. there is a bjp vaccine there is a congress vaccine there is a secular vaccine there is an indian vaccine there is national you know so why do we need i mean that unfortunately is not just the fault of uh, all of us here or the viewers it's also the narrative in the country and i again come back to social media i think the whole atmosphere is really vitiated social media has a good role we talked about the positive role but it has a huge huge negative role also and polarizing the conversation uh, dividing us and uh, you know uh, bringing down Down the uh, lowering the standards also name calling trolling where does that happen on the social media mm -hmm. if Priti says something and someone doesn't like it how does he express himself he's not going to throw eggs on a TV screen he's going to go and abuse her on social media that's what is happening to all of us so that is where I think the fault really lies until we I really feel we need to get rules or some kind of a mechanism to govern the narrative on the social media that is whipping up this kind of fashion and in terms of you know and even why are anchors trying to play up their roles they want to get more followings on social media they you know ye line lenge to itne sare bhakt soenge itna sara hamara following hoga if right. i take this line then congress will fall so they are also playing up this using it to build their own brands because we are told the number of followers you have on social media is actually your trp that's how you are popular so that's something that needs to be i think somewhere we need to do a cost correction into the way we are we are you know handling the system we just just to take that one line from what priya said forward most of the reporters on ground are unbiased anchors are not i mean that that that's an allegation that is often made that anchors Uh, are the ones who are who are not unbiased, but yet when the big story happens, um, Hindi channel, English channel, regional channel, you will always see prime time faces or or studio faces going out there and taking that reporting space. How does that change the dynamic of that story? Does that change the dynamic of the story in any way? Uh, does that contribute to the noise in any? Way? You're right there, Arunima. You know, haven't we all heard? I still remember, and I'm uh, I, I stand guilty of it. Uh, at many times as well and completely guilty because um you have an understanding of the story sitting in delhi and a big story say takes place back of the on the uttar pradesh or let's say even in karnataka or elsewhere and i would reckon you know you you'd understand the term uh, you know by local journalists we are called the para drop anchors yes, yes. so you know where we are uh, you know where nobody knows what's happening and suddenly an anchor is para drop the ob's are bought in you know and uh, you know uh, So I also understand the management's point of view because they feel that these are your faces, and it's not something that happens or it's uh, you know just attuned to India itself. Mm -hmm. I think it happens uh, in every channel or you know every international channel. Every channel invests in these five six faces, and they want them to be the face of that story. Of course, um, you know when you look at most international channels, I would think um, the space given to a reporter is a lot lot more, way more. You know they are taken way more seriously than, and you know there's an anchor person and there's a reporter. but they will be an anchor person as well attached on ground there so 
I do think, and yes, it it, it does happen because um, I, you know I, th I think a classic uh, example would be the Hathras case, if you remember. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a narrative which was brewing, and uh, there was a story which was being told, uh, and then suddenly the story, uh, you know, uh, blew up, and then every channel sent their faces, and mm -hmm. then it was, you know, the story totally turned on its head because it was all about politics. It became political. You had each channel face which sadly like i said like priya also says uh, had a basic form of allegiance that the viewer would identify with and the story got told from their lens and that's unfair to the story no and this happens a lot it happens a lot You're so right. why does it happen mr kohli give us the management uh, sense give us the revenue sense is it because dropping para dropping faces uh, brings in more viewer connect brings in more ratings uh, often we've been told that, you know, you should invest in reporters, like in, in uh, print media, the reporters byline is something that that is sacrosanct. So in television, how is it different? Why this investment in faces? How does it contribute to the revenue and to the noise? So uh, uh, to put it simple, uh, you get new faces, you get audiences uh, to a certain extent because people do follow faces. There is a lot of worshipping of, of a lot of uh, senior anchors who people want to follow. Uh, before coming to this point, one point I wanted to say regarding the Godi media which happened, uh, especially on the farmers protest and we as an organization got, why should some organizations uh, uh, who are not uh, labeled Godi media show so much of that that see farmer protest is saying, as an industry body we should come together and decry it, irrespective of the journalist, the journalist is a journalist, yeah? mm. they have worked their way up to come to where they are, they might have their leanings. But at the end of the day, they also do hardcore journalism. That has been missing in our industry and that is a vital point which none of us have addressed. So if one channel gets a bro beating by someone, all other channels show it as a chest thumping that, oh, we are the most genuine and all others are bad. That is what is the biggest problem in our industry. There is no unit. But I'm saying if the San guys, they want media also. And at the end of the day, they are decrying certain people as both the media. I don't agree. People might agree with their Andolan. People might not agree. Everybody has their viewpoint. Mm. Who are they to decide on us? So mm. we have to come together. That is one. Secondly, uh, yes, uh, three years, four years back, there was a lot of thing of getting faces. Uh, I'll give you a very small uh, example. In uh, NewsX, the organization uh, which, uh, which we work for, we have a lot of young guys who have become uh, celebrities in themselves because they got a chance during pandemic to showcase their talent they brought in great news they brought and we celebrated it right so i agree uh, to a large extent today also a lot of hero worshiping on certain anchors is there but i think two years down the line this will go because the viewer has become very smart he wants and if you are to aim the new age viewer you have to do something different and that is why you're seeing uh, new role models coming in a small example uh, we have a regional channel in haryana also in ambala per se you know, uh, the kind of YouTube uh, hero worshipping is there. There are close to 30, 40 in one district. So what are we talking of a hero worshipping sitting in Delhi? People are changing, customer tastes are changing and it will change the way uh, even uh, he, anchor worshipping will happen. I, I do see a lot of change happening in the next two years. Okay, you, you're hopeful. Uh, but Preeti, again, since we're discussing anchors, uh, we'll, we'll come back to you. you know, this thing that he said, to do something different, the pressure to do something different. You pioneered uh, the motorcycle diaries, uh, going on a bike and, and trying to figure out. Uh, the journalism, I'm sure, would stay the same, speaking to people. But the mode that you chose to, to convey that story got in attraction, got in, got in eyeballs. Uh, some others, including me, got onto the train. Others have got onto buses, get out of the, the Innova cars in which they're chasing a cavalcade, try and you know perch themselves on, on, on that car. To show that drama, that that drama is 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 essence of of news television in a way, contributes to the noise. Well, you know, I, I you know Arunima, I beg to differ with the noise is concerned because you know ultimately we are journalists. Yes, we are not print journalists. We are television journalists, right? And if you're a television journalist, you've got to tell the same story differently because it's a visual medium, and that is why I you know you brought in on why we picked the motorcycle, uh, you know, to do a. A hard hitting political election show where we are going across to leaders and we are, you know, we are trying to put out election stories. And, you know, it, it, it does cut both ways because when we started doing it, it was, I think, in 2017 
is when we said, okay, fine, how do we tell the same election story differently? Because we've done it already. You know, mm. we've done in 2014, we did this whole series called Track and Traction, where me and a camera person were on a train, God forsaken, for 48 days, right? And trying to, you know, get down in every station. And then we, we, we did bus Gujarat and they're like, Achha, train karli, bus karli. now how do we tell the same story differently? Yeah. And then it looked very gimmicky. And to be very honest, I've got to give it to our chairperson. Because I, I, I remember I was in an election meeting and we were with our chairperson and it was her idea. So she says, I think, you know, if you, do you know how to ride a motorcycle, get on it. And I was, I thought it was gimmicky. You know, for somebody who's, I thought it would be very gimmicky. You know, everything would be lost on a girl on a motorcycle. Because you're trying to make a statement, it doesn't work. When you're trying to tell, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're trying to tell an election story, mm. why, you know, why should I get on to? And we were made fun of. We really were. Nobody really looked at the content. But, you know, as, and we, and, you know, we did preserve. And to say it, we managed to do it. The content then became bigger than the motorcycle I was on. And we've done now many, many series. So I would think, it, I don't think it contributes to the noise here because I feel it's a visual medium you've got mm. to keep you know how long will somebody Arunima you know you and I both know how long will somebody keep seeing those five cuts which says yeah. okay you know Gujarat is going into election cut one cut two cut three two bites one you know um, it, those are wires no I'd rather put A and I there why, why has my channel invested in me as a journalist to tell the same story differently visually you mm. know they hope that I bring in the content but how do I do it differently and I think with you've got to be TV you know, we can't be shown off what, what we are. You know, I, I'm not a print journalist. I'm a television journalist. It, I am in a visual medium. So I've got to keep doing it. Whether And, and that is why maybe, you know, the viewer connects. Because they mm -hmm. want to see something different, but want to connect to the same story. So I don't think the noise comes in here. I think this is a little different than that. I would reckon the noise would, again, like I said, those, those massive TV debates that we hold every evening on the same topic, yes. But I would think we need to do it. We need to keep, you know, keep pushing the envelope on how we tell a story. Right. So, so we are agreeing on, on that, that, you know, the problem is not so much with, with the drama that is in, in, in the essence of television news. We keep looking for new ways to engage our viewers. The problem seems to be once again in the studio. So Priya, uh, again, uh, uh, taking forward from another point that Mr. Kohli made, that there's no unity amongst the news channels. Uh, we have a National Broadcasters Association, uh, but there, are, there have been organizations who have chosen to leave NBA uh, when, when they were penalized or there were attempts to hold them accountable. Um, we don't want government control. We don't want judicial control. We want to, to ensure that the control is in our hands. But if there is no agreement within the news industry about what is noise and how do you control it, is there a way forward? I'm so glad you asked me this question because quickly I just want to disagree with Varun here in what he said about the farmers' protest. I think what the farmers did was very smart. You know, they identified the anchors who are going to take a line. They're not going to tell the farmers' story. They've already made up their minds and they are going to be taking, a, you know, a pro-establishment line. So we don't want them to tell your story. They, in fact, had their own YouTube channel and that is the real danger the news is going to face. If we are going to give a slanted version of news, then people will form their own YouTube channels. It's the era of the social media and get their story out they're not going to depend on you and me to get the story out they're going to be their own story people so at the uh, tell us so at the end of the day if we want to do uh, fair reporting we have to do it uh, you know uh, otherwise the uh, sorry the, the stakeholder himself will uh, pick up a channel and start telling a story and they don't want you to tell a slanted story so they don't want you why should i call a certain anchor here when i know exactly what he's going to say he's not going to be kind to me he's going to take what i said distort it and portray it in a slanted way why should those people be invited i think what the farmers did was a huge wake-up call for the entire media industry and I totally applaud them for that you know in that sense and uh, who should be the watchdogs I think why did certain people walk out of the NBA because they felt that you know uh, the NBA was taking one line so they wanted to form their own parallel logo body I don't know maybe we should look for people outside to govern us maybe you know retired judges or retired editors I don't know but we need to find someone that everybody agrees on and that's never going to be easy so I really don't know how. Oh, that's all going. right so closing remarks then uh, starting with uh, you, Mr. Kohli, to, to reiterate what we started off by discussing, reducing the noise in TV news, the noise factor that we see on TV is often an outcome of the business model. Yes or no? At the end of the discussion, do you think that the noise factor is a result of the business model and is addressing the business model then the answer to reducing noise on news television? Uh, I'll, I'll change it the other way around. There are a lot of shows like what Priya does and all, where there is no noise and we still attract a lot of ratings. So there is no specific answer of it. 
I have seen a lot of channels where there is no noise whatsoever. Today it's it's a welcoming change when you guys switch off uh, uh, the mic of a person who's shouting beyond a point. Things are changing. Things are evolving to a large extent, right? Today, viewer wants the news to be said in a peaceful way so that at least they can understand what they want. And one thing more, why I wanted to add, thanks to pandemic, news on television has come back to prominence. Mm -hmm. I during the pandemic, at least every news which was circulated on a digital media, I used to get at least twenty frantic messages: Is this story true or not? Because people don't believe what is thrown at digital media till they come back to television to check it. and it has become a more authenticated form than uh, print because print comes once a day and yeah. this is live 24 hours so i'm say we guys have a real opportunity at the same time as an industry body we have to right. come together without a, and have a common uh, area that how do we need to progress to, towards a, a particular goal i am very curious so, to know on that point you're saying you know television news has come back uh, with its credibility because of the pandemic yeah. print comes once a day but what about digital i mean there is another alternative medium there exactly is, exactly anurma my point is there is a lot of lot of fake news which which is there on the digital media people come back to us to check or they go back to the tv screen to check whether this news is true or not because a 5 year old clip is also put to care and then it gets viral thanks to whatsapp and all on the so people are relying on television to get the real news mm -hmm. they might get fascinated by a news which is there on the digital platform but they go back to channel at times to check or to with us i mean i get a lot of messages every now and then is this story true is this story true because there are a lot of fake news which is going thanks to the digital uh, boom that has happened right pretty closing remarks uh, is is we agree we agreed that there is noise but is the business model responsible for the noise on news television if so is changing the business model the answer to this problem i really wouldn't know because i i i whether changing the business model i really wouldn't know but when you know i can just talk as a journalist and i'll come back to the point that priya had made and i totally agree with her i think the kisan andolan arunima for journalists as a community was a textbook case to read the right act to us you know if the whole narrative was going a certain way when the digital guys when they themselves started controlling the narrative in terms of the kind of information they wanted out is when most of us realized that you can't cover it your way yeah? you can't you know you can't call them uh, 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 khalistani day mm -hmm. after day on prime time you can't do it you know it's it's not cutting it there's a there's a general opinion which is building against them you know against you so i do think that and i do feel that i think it lies in your own hand as a journalist because i do subscribe to the old theory of what journalism stands for we've got to stop becoming caricatures of ourselves and uh, we're we're doing that and i do also hope and i hope that there is a you know rhyme for every reason there's a time for every season i hope that season is it you know i hope now you know there, there there's always a phase that we see which peaks in tv especially in news we've always seen that let's hope we've uh, you know at least with that whole I don't think we we've got through our worst. I think it's going to be an ongoing process. You know, we mm. will see many, many Sushant Singh Rajput cases uh, coming up ahead. But I do hope, as individuals, we start realizing a little bit more on what we are doing. But and, you don't think, really, you don't think there is a constituency out there which believed in the Sushant Singh Rajput conspiracy theories, which believed in the Khalistani narrative uh, that that was peddled out, and anchors and journalists who were who were uh, you know putting out more to add to that narrative. actually had viewership you don't subscribe to that that theory no no i i, I totally agree with you of course they had viewership of course that's the reason why they were doing it uh, you know because there was a ready audience that's what i began you know if aruna that's what i said right in the beginning you can't just blame the anchors yeah. you've got to blame the people who are consuming this news and are propelling the anchors to say it five times louder uh, but that's not you know i can blame the viewers mm -hmm. but ultimately it comes down the buck stops with me and i hope it ebbs there i hope this ends but it's not going to they we will continue to see it but now there's a stronger sense in the, in, in a certain set of people like i said who like so many of our you know our own ilk our own tribe mm -hmm. were made up into this larger than life faces right and today they are not today yeah. there are pale comparison to what they stood for like i said caricatures of themselves now right and i hope this trend continues we have final 30 seconds this will only save us i don't think anything else yeah. we're counting down to the ending this this very interesting uh, discussion last 30 seconds to i think what it boils down to really is credibility you know do you uh, whether your business model or whatever the real best model is the credibility do you pander to the popular opinion and say yes there was a conspiracy behind sushant singh rajput or do you tell the uncomfortable truth hmm. 
that really is the bottom line i think it comes to and a lot of business houses also are now you know for instance i know rajiv bajaj announced that he will not advertise in certain channels that t- tell a certain uh, slanted narrative so if the industries themselves start doing that if the business co- houses start giving revenues to responsible channels that will help in building up a credible media also the farmers already uh, put us on uh, notice yes. so i think bottom line is credibility and that comes from within Right, Priya, Preeti, uh, Mr. Kohli, thank you so much. Uh, I had a great time uh, discussing this. Sony to Kral, over to you. Thank you, thank Kansha. you, Arunima. Thank you.